Okay, good morning, uh, uh, everybody. I'm uh, Massimo Zotti, head of the Government and Security uh, Strategic Business Unit of uh, uh, Planet Tech Italia. Today, uh, with uh, uh, Ian Mayer, who is uh, um, responsible for, for the funding of the OCRE uh, initiative. This webinar uh, is uh, organized jointly by uh, Planet Tech Italia and uh, OCRE. To, to present this opportunity for the, the, um, for the research institution in, uh, in Europe. I will start sharing uh, my uh, presentation. Okay. So, uh, th this webinar uh, is about uh, the, uh, the uh, EO services uh, funding opportunities for the research. Uh, I will uh, quickly introduce uh, the, uh, the OCRA initiative and then I will leave uh, to Ian uh, the floor. Um, we are uh, uh, today focusing on a specific call of the OCRA uh, program and it is uh, the Earth Observation Service Adoption Call. Um, the, the, the main aim of this call uh, are uh, to, to stimulate the use of Earth Observation Services in uh, research and uh, notably those services which are based on data uh, coming from the Copernicus uh, uh, program. Um, the, the aim of the, the OCRE program is uh, to demonstrate that using Earth Observation Services and data can have an impact uh, on uh, research uh, uh, project in terms of, uh, um, uh, of concrete results. Uh, and uh, so OCRE is, is looking for uh, uh, showcases about the results of, uh, and outcomes of this project. And of course, uh, the interest of Planetech in uh, uh, organizing this webinar and presenting uh, his uh, offer of uh, Earth Observation Service is in line with the aim of the OCRE initiative, uh, which want to contribute to the development of uh, the market of Earth Observation Service suppliers. Planet Tech Italia is uh, one of the suppliers of Earth Observation Service uh, through a platform, a cloud-based platform called Reticus, and I will uh, talk about this uh, uh, after. And so, I will leave the floor to Ian, uh, asking Ian to introduce the uh, OCRE initiative, the OCRE program, and the opportunity for the, uh, the researchers. Uh, Ian, floor is yours. Hello, Massimo. Um, and thank you all for joining this webinar. My name is Jan Meyer, and I work for the Norwegian National Research and Educational Network, UNINET. And as Massimo pointed out, in OCRE, I'm responsible for the adoption funding. Just give me a sec while I while I share my screen. There we go. Is it visible? Yes, it is. Yep. Okay, so I won't say too much uh, about the, the OCRA project. Uh, Massimo already covered most of it, so just to put it into perspective, OCRA is an EOS project and OCRA is tasked with establishing the portfolio of commercial services that will be available through EOS. So in order to do that, OCRA will establish procurement vehicles for two service types, general cloud infrastructure as a service, plus everything that the hyperscalers typically put on top of that, and commercial earth observation services, like the ones that uh, Planetech is offering. And then following this, um, we have funding available to stimulate the adoption of these services. And that's what we're going to talk about today. And thirdly, OCRA's interest, by doing these two activities, so the stimulation of the adoption and the establishment of the portfolio of commercial services, OCRA will develop the capability for procuring and brokering commercial services in the EOSC. So the long-term vision here is that for you as a scientist, there will be this EOSC that will have both community offered services and commercial services, and then it should have a rich portfolio of commercial services that help you uh, do the best research you can, the fastest you can. So zooming in, focusing on the OCRA adoption funding. So we have a total pot of about 9.5 million euros available, and it's roughly equally split between the two service types. 
Um, as you can see, we have different waves. And today we're talking mostly, we're talking about the wave two and three. So the distinguishing factor here is that the wave two is 100% uh, OCRA funded. The wave three is a co-funding wave. So as you can see, we have more money available to co-fund than we have to 200% uh, fund. Um, I should add that we have a certain degree of flexibility to transfer budget between the waves, um, all, all um, according to the, uh, the projects that we get in, right? Um, so we can say that the wave two is targeting research projects at individual institutions, wave three research projects at groups of institutions that can use OCRA funding to increase their scale, right? So the co-funding is meant for you're doing something and you can use the OCRA funding to do more of that and thus increase the impact of your research. And why that matters, um, I'll get back to that later on. Um, important dates and for this call and future calls um, we currently have an earth observation uh, adoption call open that's been open for a while the application deadline is monday the 30th of november um, we then use some time to evaluate the proposals and anyone who has submitted a project should latest by the 29th of january know whether or not they've been awarded um, subsequent calls for Earth observation are planned uh, middle of February to open and somewhere around July, although I have to point out that we are going to make an attempt to pull that last call forward. <clears throat> so quick look at the process. So if you submit a, a project, what can you expect? Um, after you've submitted the project proposal, OCRA does the evaluation. We have an external advisory board that reviews our intended awards. So the OCRA project does the evaluation, but we have to defend our choices. And the function of that is oversight of funding allocation, right? So we have to ensure that our funding allocation is done in a balanced, fair, transparent, and non-discriminatory way. And our external advisory board helps us achieve that goal. And I've included the link in case you're curious to see who's on that advisory board. So we, we have a nice, um, a nice subset. We have a nice representation of various disciplines and types of organization in the European uh, research area on our advisory board to help us with that. For projects that get awarded with OCRA funding, um, we will then engage with a memorandum of understanding. And then OCRA, together with the awarded project, uh, together will establish the detailed service requirements needed for you to use Earth Observation Services. And we need to do that together because OCRA then conducts the actual procurement of the services. Your project then uses those services and what OCRA gets out of it is a showcase and hopefully continued uh, adoption of those services with other types of budget. Um, so OCRA will prepare, will make a showcase out of the use of Earth observation services that you do, uh, and we expect awarded projects to assist us in that. Um, something to point out, um, there's a likelihood that you've never heard of something like this, but there are different ways to procure services, and the OCRA services are being procured through something that is called a dynamic purchasing system. I will not say too much about that, but there is one attribute that is, um, that is interesting from your perspective, and that is that in a dynamic purchasing system, unlike a framework contract, you can have a continuous inflow of suppliers. So that means, so with a framework contract, you basically lock the market and the suppliers you can buy from for a fixed period in time. With a dynamic purchasing system, you don't do that. So that means that your choice of suppliers um, is way more flexible than it could otherwise have been. Um, what OCRA is after is uh, bigger research relevant projects that really show how the research community, um, no, that really sh show the research community how OCRA's portfolio of services can help you achieve great research outcomes. And what is a great research so, so how, how that works, that can be different things, right? 
It could be that thanks to these services, you can do new things that you couldn't do before. It could be that you're able to do things faster or for with less money or with higher quality. Um, it could allow smaller groups to do larger undertakings that before perhaps uh, were beholden to larger institutions with a similar large support apparatus. Um, with online services, uh, that capability is much more democratized. And it could allow nimble budgets to achieve great things. And there's probably a whole bunch of advantages that we haven't thought of. So what we're looking for is inspiring showcases, right? Um, even though 9.5 million uh, sounds like a lot, um, it's no more than the annual central IT budget of Oslo Uni. There are thousands of uh, research institutions in Europe, and we want to make a imp significant impact on the way of thinking in the wider community. And for that, we need inspiring showcases. A um, couple of words on eligibility and what the funding is for. Um, to keep it very practical and very short, um, all member institutions of national research and educational networks in the green countries, they're eligible for funding. Uh, we have some leeway um, if you're not, but the, uh, the key thing to remember is that this is funding for uh, not-for-profit research. So by and large, that means academic community, research institutes, typically that type of space. Um, in the other project call, um, we've seen collaborations between research institutions and commercial institutions. And that could, of course, be very fine, right? Um, but there needs to be a not-for-profit research organization involved in that, that preferably is then a member of the NREN. Um, the funding can be used for purchases from suppliers in the Okra procurement vehicle. So when Planetech becomes part of the Okra dynamic purchasing system, you can buy services from Planetech. Um, the money is for the services as such, the money is for consulting services in support of using these services, and the money can also be used for infrastructure as a service in support of using the Earth observation services. What's not covered by OCRA funding is your own time. So what that means is that we're kind of assuming that you already have something interesting that you want to do, where uh, OCRA can help you do that in a different way using someone else's services. What we want to know from you in your application, um, we're going to ask you for a short description of your research project. So this is, this is where you basically sell your project to us, right? You have to demonstrate that you have a compelling uh, project ongoing and explain how it benefits from a look on the earth from the sky. Could be any research field, so it's definitely not limited to uh, earth sciences. Uh, it could be health, it could be investigating pollution levels in European cities, I don't know, could be many different things. Um, but what we're looking for is research that um, that is inspiring for other people and that makes it easy for other people to see, right, that research project is doing this using these services, Ah, but that means I can also do something like that. Um, second really important thing that we're interested in is how will these Earth observation services, based on Copernicus data, support your project activities and improve your research outcomes? Right? So you're doing research. Thanks to using these services, you can do something better or different than you could before. And that you have to make clear. Um, we also need to know what services you intend to use um, and, and a rough budget for that. Um, we're interested in your ability to execute, and we have a couple of questions on project team and, uh, and certain other elements. And we're interested in your timeline. So sooner is better for us, right? We have to make showcases. So the sooner you use these services and get experience with the benefits that we can then translate into a showcase, the better it is for us. So uh, let's see, uh, then we need to know um, what type of funding and which funding tier uh, you're applying for. So as I mentioned before, we have the 100% funding and the 50% co-funded. Um, 
the funding tiers are the same for both uh, both streams, except that with the co-funding, uh, we're willing to put in more money if you're also willing to put in more money, right? So with the co-funded tier, you could have a project that can really uh, grow to a significant scale. A um, little bit on types of organizations. So we're looking for proposals both from single institutions, uh, collaborations between institutions, but we, we'd also like to see proposals from, yeah, s Freeze, ERICs, NRENs, national lean for organizations, uh, discipline-oriented platforms. Um, those types of collaborations, from our perspective, um, are very interesting because they could mean an adoption amplifier, right? If you have a pre-existing collaboration uh, that wants to make these services available to all its members in a certain way, then obviously that, that stimulates adoption quite a bit. Um, and last but not least, if you have some really good idea outside of these tiers or uh, boundaries, then please do apply or please do contact local. Our evaluation priorities are pretty straightforward and they're closely linked to the things we're asking for. Um, the most important is that we can see the impact of the OCRA services on your research, right? That's, that's the most important thing that we're looking at. The second important thing is, okay, so what is the showcase effect of the research that you're, that you're doing? Does it have a certain wow factor? Um, thirdly and fourthly, your ability to use the services and achieve impact in a relatively short time uh, and your ability to execute. Now, um, when I say ability to use services, right, that doesn't mean that your actual research project has to be finished within the next year. Right, because from your perspective, um, you're after the publication. What we're after is your use of the services and how that benefits your research. So as long as the service consumption is relatively early, um, the publication could be way later. So that's all I had to say. Um, Thanks, uh, Jan. Mm -hmm. very, very clear presentation, very exhaustive in, uh, in explaining uh, the objective of, uh, of the call. Of course, uh, we are open to, to get uh, questions from the uh, participants. We already have uh, a few questions, so at the end of this webinar, we will try uh, the answer to everybody. Um, I will uh, continue uh, my presentation and uh, um, so sharing a, a, a few words about the Planetech and why we are here today. Planetech is an Italian company founded uh, 26 uh, uh, years ago, uh, so with uh, a very long experience in the uh, observation markets, uh, we provide a solution for uh, uh, observation special data infrastructure, uh, uh, location-based system, uh, and space uh, software partner of Hexagon uh, Geospatial. And uh, uh, especially in the last years, we've been invested a lot in the creation of a cloud-based platform, which is called Reticus. The choice of uh, the name Reticus uh, uh, was made because uh, uh, Joan Joaquin Reticus was uh, the a unique assistant of Nicolaus uh, Copernicus. And actually, uh, Joan Jacquin Reticus was uh, uh, the one who convinced uh, his, uh, his uh, master, his teacher, to uh, promote, uh, to disseminate the results of his uh, research. So, in some way, our Reticus platform uh, is uh, the way we try to promote uh, and uh, make accessible uh, the, the big value of the information provided by the Copernicus uh, program. So you will see there's a strong link between uh, the Copernicus program, the data available through the Sentinels satellite constellations, and our platform, which is a cloud-based platform. We offer subscription-based services for accessing not only the satellite information, but especially the knowledge, which comes from the, uh, the use of this uh, uh, data. Let's... Uh, uh, try to explain how the platform works and which is the benefit for uh, the research entities uh, who can use these services. Reticus is a platform designed to continuously access 
satellite data acquired by um, satellite constellation, like the Sentinels of the Copernicus program. Uh, it's a uh, high processing capabilities um, facility for the process, massive processing of uh, data. So we download the data, we process the data, and we transform this data into uh, analytics and uh, knowledge. The, the benefit for uh, the uh, research entities who will use uh, the services provided by Reticus is that they, they can uh, very easily exploit uh, the advantages of having uh, a constellation continuously collecting data over and over and around our Earth and uh, consume this data into their application. Very often the difficulties uh, many research centers have uh, is uh, to, to work uh, with uh, big data, with the data uh, which need to be pre-processed in, uh, in, in order to extract information and knowledge. Reticus is there for uh, this reason, to support the exploitation of this data. So to, to help research entities not to focus on a single data set and not to, uh, to take care of the complex procedure uh, requested that to process massive amounts of data. We do this for you so you can uh, directly access the results of this uh, massive processing of satellite information. The application field for Reticus are uh, very, very large. So we have uh, services for uh, monitoring the ground motion, the terrain displacement, to support uh, landslides, monitoring the subsidence uh, infrastructure stability. We have application for uh, the sea and water monitoring for marine application. So we can monitor water quality, algae blooms, uh, aquaculture um, uh, application, uh, fishing and of course uh, we can monitor lands uh, we can mon monitor the urban dynamics uh, and agriculture so there are very large uh, application that can be exploited and supported by uh, our platform there are three different ways to access the knowledge provided by reticus through a web application so an online application which is uh, mostly uh, designed to support the end users. So in, in vertical markets, uh, our end users uh, can access uh, the web application or uh, they can uh, even just download a PDF uh, with the periodic reports. And uh, uh, the, the third uh, uh, option is uh, to access the information of Reticus via web services, APIs, or uh, even just downloading the ship file, KML, uh, a geo database uh, with uh, the, con the possibility to get continuous update on the information. So ideally, you can uh, design a project where you on a weekly or even monthly basis, uh, you get a continuous update on the information which will fuel your uh, research project. So we'll help you to have uh, data continuously updated by our platform, consuming the information coming from the satellite constellation. This is uh, the idea behind uh, uh, Reticus. And uh, if you see this, uh, um, the, this slide, uh, the, the three ways of accessing the knowledge provided by Reticus also explain why Planetech is uh, so interested in supporting the research entities uh, who will work uh, in the uh, OCRE initiative, who will participate in the OCRE initiative. Because uh, in order to create uh, uh, application like uh, the, the the one you see on uh, on the left uh, on my slide, a web application which is uh, very easy to use uh, and useful for the users. We need to cooperate with the, the research entities in order to improve our application. So we are uh, absolutely open to cooperate with the research entities, giving uh, access to our Reticus uh, solution and working together in order to create a new application which really. Uh, simplify the complexity of uh, space. This is the motto of Planetech. This is our mission. We want together with you to simplify the complexity of, of uh, space solution to the benefit of uh, uh, end users. So very quickly, uh, a, a presentation of the services that Planetech will uh, hopefully, hopefully offer on the uh, DPS, on the dynamic uh, 
recruitment system of uh, Ocre. We have several uh, uh, applications for uh, Reticus uh, targeted to different uh, markets. And uh, let's see uh, quickly uh, what we offer. Uh, you can access the uh, website uh, www.reticus.eu and you will see, first of all, uh, the uh, dis displacement services, which is a service uh, aimed to monitor the ground motion using multi-temporal interferometry based on um, SAR uh, data exploitation. Uh, with this technique, uh, we use uh, SAR data, notably the Sentinel-1 data, which are uh, collected continuously every five days uh, in uh, over Europe. If a uh, uh, ground motion problem happens, like uh, subsidence, with uh, every passage of the satellite, we can uh, measure the distance between the sensor on the satellite and the ground, and specific target on the ground, and using uh, very complex algorithm for uh, for insert processing of some data, we can extract information about the uh, level of displacement of a specific target on the Earth. This is a, a technique which is at state of the art, and thanks to this technique, for each specific target, we can monitor the terrain displacement along a very long time frame. So in this example, you see that's uh, starting from October 2014, which is uh, the, the date of uh, the very first collection of Sentinel-1A, uh, the satellite uh, on uh, in the European uh, uh, areas, uh, up to May 2017. And so you see that this specific target has a displacement of uh, 23 millimeters, because we can measure the Ground displacement, uh, um, the ground displacement with an accuracy of uh, uh, in the order of millimeters. I was saying this is a state of the art technology because every time you see a situation like this with uh, several red dots, meaning that uh, you have targets uh, which are uh, moving down along the line of sight of the satellite you will find a problem like this. In this case, we are monitoring a bridge and we have a joint of the bridge which is broken. So somehow, the, the, this uh, part of the bridge is uh, moving down and uh, you, you can easily understand that uh, knowing in advance uh, this kind of problem can uh, help uh, uh, save many other uh, problems uh, and uh, ideally even uh, lives uh, if you are able to to monitor the, the infrastructure stability, building stability, and uh, many other uh, uh, problems like this. So you see an example of uh, the information that we can provide and we can continuously update thanks to the availability of uh, Sentinel uh, uh, data collected uh, uh, every week by the, the, the two Sentinel-1 A and B satellites. So in, in this case, uh, you see uh, an example in the Alps uh, where uh, you have uh, uh, a small municipality with uh, problems of uh, uh, stability due to landslide, slow movement of uh, the terrain. And so we can uh, monitor the stability of this area. And we, we see that in this case, uh, there are uh, some buildings which are moving. So something which should be stable because it is on the Earth's surface, Instead, it is uh, slowly moving. So this is something uh, we can uh, understand and, and uh, uh, monitor with the, this uh, technique. This is another case in uh, a small town in France, in the south of France, where uh, a, a geothermic uh, um, experiment uh, uh, caused a, a, an incredible problems with the, 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 the ground, which is pumping up. So. In this case, uh, you see not uh, the, the, the buildings going down, but you see the buildings coming up because uh, the, somehow the, the, the ground is, uh, is uh, coming up and uh, so you can see cracks uh, on the building. And again, this is a good way to monitor the stability of the buildings and the effect of this uh, uh, geothermic uh, problem. This is uh, uh, finally another example. Uh, we are in, in Rome, in Italy, uh, along the highway which connects uh, 
the uh, city of Rome with the, the it's, uh, Fiumicino Airport. Fiumicino is one of the largest airports uh, in, uh, in Italy, of course. And uh, what, what is important to, to see now is that uh, this information, I remember, which can be updated on a monthly basis thanks to the weekly collection of the Santirel uh, satellites, can be the fuel for other vertical applications. And here is the role of the research entities who can support us to create, to improve vertical application useful to support the monitoring of uh, landslide, the monitoring of uh, uh, water networks, the monitoring of roads uh, and uh, um, uh, infrastructure, and of course, uh, the, the stability of uh, buildings. So the information of the reticle displacement services can be integrated with the other information into vertical application like network uh, alert. Network Alert is a, a ver vertical application supporting the managers of uh, water and sewer networks. And uh, uh, it, this is a very good example of how we can integrate satellite information with other ancillary information, supporting uh, the, the managers of this network to understand which are the segments of my network which need inspection. Where shall I prioritize my inspection to identify stability problems. Maybe because in, in my sewer network, I may have a problem like this. I can very easily identify this kind of problem by monitoring the surface of the, the streets and integrate this with the information coming from the citizens. So integrating crowdsourced information, information coming from the, the uh, the data collected by the manager of the network uh, from the, the, its uh, users in terms of problem in, uh, in the connection of uh, uh, the networks and so on. And this is uh, where uh, we hope to get uh, uh, a very close cooperation with the research entities uh, who will be willing to work with us uh, in the integration of management and management of uh, big data coming from uh, different uh, resources. Other application may be in, for the safe way um, uh, solution. In this case, uh, we monitor the stability of roads, uh, the stability of uh, uh, railways, uh, again, integrating the ground displacement information with uh, information about the traffic, information about uh, the, 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 the static of uh, the bridges, uh, information about the material of the bridges. And there is a lot of uh, information we can uh, gather by integrating information coming from space uh, with uh, many other sources uh, of uh, data. There is a lot of work to do to make this uh, application work even better, even if they are already uh, adopted by a lot of uh, users. So again, another large advantage for uh, our research entities working with Planet is that we already have uh, end users, many end users in Italy, in Europe, uh, and uh, in many other countries in the world. Because you know that sat uh, Sentinel satellite data are available everywhere in the world. So we have customers using this data in any part of the world. We can work together to improve this application having uh, end users which uh, I can promise uh, are very demanding in terms of uh, the quality of the information they need uh, to save money and to make better decisions. So this is for a, for a researcher, I know this is uh, absolutely crucial to have a very good uh, request uh, in terms of uh, requirements of the users, having uh, to have a solution which support uh, the development of the uh, research project and they have a, a good idea for uh, solving uh, uh, the problems of the end users. So we, we can offer all of this. We can offer the, the satellite services, we can offer the requirements of uh, end users to, better, uh, to, to be better addressed with uh, the research uh, initiatives. I will go quickly through the other application. Building check, of course, uh, is an application where, again, we can monitor the stability of uh, the building, combining 
the satellites, uh, the, the information coming from the Sentinel satellite with other very high resolution information coming from other satellite uh, constellation. Again, this is something absolutely useful to be monitored in the time. And uh, in, also in this case, we need to integrate uh, big data coming from sensor from IoT. There is a lot of room for uh, research in this field. Another uh, application of Reticus is called urban dynamics. In this case, we do not use uh, uh, radar data, we use uh, optical data to, and uh, we use uh, artificial intelligence and uh, deep learning uh, techniques to monitor the evolution of, uh, of urban areas. Uh, combining uh, multiple sources of data, especially, of course, uh, very high resolution uh, data from uh, commercial satellites, together with uh, uh, high resolution data coming from the Sentinel uh, constellation. So with Sentinel, we have a continuous monitoring of uh, urban areas. And as soon as we identify relevant changes in urban areas, we use a very high resolution data to better understand these changes and so to focus with the high details of these very high resolution satellites in a specific area. Again, there is a lot of room for research in the use of artificial intelligence and deep learning techniques to identify this changing in the continuous processing of the satellite data provided by Copernicus. The wildfire uh, uh, application, again, is an application based on the processing of Sentinel-2 data and Sentinel-3 data for monitoring forest fires and especially the effects of uh, forest fires in, uh, in, in area affected by these problems. So we can uh, detect the burnt area, we can uh, uh, calculate the severity of the fire. We can even detect uh, potential uh, illegal building activities in the areas affected by the forest fire. You know that uh, in Italy and in, in many other places in Europe, it is illegal to build uh, anything in, area, in areas which uh, were affected by forest fire. And uh, of course, uh, it is very important to monitor the regrowth of vegetation in burnt areas. Again, there is a lot of room for the, the automatic analysis of these changes, and we are really looking forward to working with uh, um, research entities uh, to improve our algorithms for the automatic uh, detection of these changes. In the, with the aim of having a web uh, application very easy to use for our decision makers, which uh, are not willing to, to understand how a, a continuous flow of satellite data can be used to, to monitor the effect of uh, burnt areas. They just need to get indicators and metrics about uh, the effect of this phenomenon. And we offer this web application to simplify the access to the knowledge. Or we just uh, deliver PDF and reports very easy to, to understand, which are the results of very complex analysis uh, of the satellite data. Finally, a couple of uh, uh, applications based on the water quality monitoring. Uh, the aquaculture uh, application of Reticus uh, is another very complex application, which at the end provides a very simple information to the, uh, to the fish farmers. They want to, to know which is the right, when is the right moment to harvest their mussel from, uh, from the sea. So they don't want to, to, to know anything. You can imagine a fish farmer don't know anything about the uh, satellite data. But at the end, they just want to understand which is the right moment to harvest the mussels from, from the uh, uh, farms of, of, uh, of fish or of, uh, uh, shellfish. So with the uh, aquaculture application, we, again, we simplify the complexity of the space data and we provide very simple information for uh, users who are uh, uh, interested to maximize the results of their commercial activities. 
the very last uh, application is uh, Reticus Marine, which is an application which aims uh, to provide uh, continuous information, uh, uh, in this case on a daily basis, about uh, the chlorophyll in uh, seawater, uh, the temperature of the sea surface, and uh, the transparency and turbidity of the water. Again, all of these uh, indicators can be combined to, to obtain statistics, trends, uh, and uh, uh, information useful, for example, for the reporting on the, of the environmental agency and uh, the monitoring of uh, the health of our uh, seas. In this case, you see the Adriatic Sea uh, along the, the, the eastern coast of uh, Italy. So my, this is uh, uh, all of, uh, for uh, my presentation. I hope I succeed to, to give you some hints and some suggestions about uh, we, how many can be the areas of uh, cooperation between uh, Planetech, the OCRE program, and the research uh, entities uh, in order to uh, exploit and create uh, successful uh, uh, showcases of the use of uh, Earth Observation Services in research uh, application. You find here uh, my uh, details for, for the contact of my colleague Francesca Albenese, um, and you can write to the OCRE at the planetech.it uh, email address uh, to gather uh, more information. Uh, Ian, I leave you the floor for uh, any final comments. In the meanwhile, uh, I will look for uh, some uh, uh, questions from uh, the, the audience. Let me check if uh, we have uh, any. Mm, thank you, Massimo. That was a very interesting presentation. I learned a thing or two myself. That was, uh, it's very interesting to see what you can actually do with Earth observation combined, Earth observation data combined with clever and, 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 and strong applications. Thank you, thank you, Ian. So I see uh, we have a couple of uh, uh, questions uh, where you already uh, tried to, to answer. Uh, so from Florence, uh, uh, we have a uh, uh, request about uh, uh, the, the timeline. So the need to, uh, to make orders by the end of November. No, the, the, you, you say uh, your response is that the application form is accessible. And we have uh, uh, copied the, the link uh, for the, the application form. And uh, the deadline to fill uh, the form is at the 30th of uh, November. So uh, then there will be a time to make orders if uh, the, the project is awarded. And uh, OCRE will uh, decide to fund uh, this uh, project for uh, the, the purchase of uh, Earth Observation uh, Service. Second question is uh, where can we find the document to get the financial support? And uh, the, again, the link is uh, the one you posted in the, um, in, uh, yeah, in, in your uh, previous uh, uh, answer. Uh, I don't know if we have uh, any other uh, question for this webinar. Okay. Otherwise, I will uh, thank you, Ian, very much. Yes, thank you for the opportunity. I wish uh, good luck uh, to the OCRE program, uh, to all the colleagues uh, who are working at this uh, exciting program, and I really look forward to receiving a lot of uh, application and uh, hopefully a lot of requests for uh, Reticus services uh, to be used mm. <laughs> to research initiatives. Yes, thank you, and good luck with this afternoon's webinar. Thank you. Okay. Thank you all for uh, for attending this webinar, and don't hesitate to to contact us for uh, further uh, inquiries or uh, clarification. Have a nice day, everybody. Thank you, Ian. Okay. Thank you too. Bye bye. Bye bye.